Hey guys, we're up to our final video of fresh theory to do with cellular respiration. So our last video to do with cellular respiration is the same as the final topic for photosynthesis. And these are the factors that affect the rate of cellular respiration. We need to know three. We need to know temperature, glucose availability, and oxygen concentration. So luckily we've already done most of these before. So just a really quick summary of what happens in aerobic cellular respiration and where things are happening. So this is the important part. Um, glycolysis is stage one. That's over here where glucose is turned into pyruvate and we get two ATP out of that. Okay, so that's our first stage. Our second stage in the middle here, that's the citric acid or the Krebs cycle. And it, sorry, we also make NADH in the first stage. So in the second stage, this is now happening in the matrix of the mitochondrion. Uh, we're taking that pyruvate, we're making lots and lots of NADH, and we're making another two ATP. Our final stage over here, I'm just gonna get rid of this bit. We're just gonna call it the electron transport chain or the ETC. This is happening in the cristae or in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And this one, we make lots and lots. We make 30 or 32 ATP, uh, and we use up all of that NADH that we made in those previous reactions. So that's just a really quick summary of our three different stages. So the three factors that we need to know that affect the rate of cellular respiration. Number one, oxygen concentration glucose availability and temperature. So let's have a look here. Oxygen concentration, very similar graph to what we see when we look at similar to light in photosynthesis. Okay, very similar graph. But down in this section here, we have oxygen as a limiting factor. So as we increase the amount of oxygen, we increase the rate of cellular respiration, okay? But then we get to this little plateau area up here. So what's happening up here? We're still increasing the oxygen, but the rate of cellular respiration stays constant. Why is it doing that? Because there must be some other factor that's limiting it. What are the other factors? You could have glucose, or temperature. Okay, so the other thing that we need to link with this is if we're talking about oxygen, where does oxygen play a part in aerobic cellular respiration? And it's this bit here. Okay, if you have less oxygen or whenever you increase the oxygen, this can work the other way around too, is we're going to be talking about the number of ETC reactions and it's therefore going to result in a lot less ATP generation. The second one that we're gonna talk about, this looks almost the same as that first one. So in this section here, as we increase the glucose, we increase the rate of cellular respiration. Why are we doing that? Because we're getting more glycolysis this time and therefore more ATP generation. When you get up to a certain point, up this stage up here, you keep increasing your glucose concentration, but your rate of cellular respiration stays the same. It's really important that we don't write it's zero, okay? Because it's not zero, it's actually a high rate, but it's staying constant no matter how much more glucose you give it. And that must mean that another factor is limiting it. Let's think. You can pause if you want to. I'm hoping that you came up with oxygen, which we just talked about, oxygen concentration, and also temperature. So our final one that we need to talk about is temperature. What does this look like? It's exactly the same as an enzyme graph because it's got to do with enzymes. So down here at this cold temperatures, that's number one. So let's go back to our enzyme graph and think about what we do here. So down here, we've got low temp. That means less collisions, less 
reactions. Okay, then we get our optimum. So number two here, I'm just gonna put it up here. Two is optimum temp. And this is where we get our highest rate of cellular respiration. And the final one is this section down here. What's happening when we get the temperature too high? So increase temp too high. That means that we break bonds in tertiary structure. We end up changing shape of active sites. All of this is denaturation and that will decrease my rate of cellular respiration. So it's exactly the same as all the other enzyme graphs that we've done before. So you can see here, this one talks about, sorry, this graph here is going, I'm just gonna remove my pen markings. So when the temperature is low, the reactant molecules have less energy and so they don't react as quickly. So that's talking about this section here. When the temperature is high, we get increased energy disrupting the bonds in the tertiary structure. Enzyme denatures, changes the shape of the active site. Substrate can no longer bind and thus the rate of CR falls. These are good questions because they're the same in cellular respiration, they're the same in photosynthesis and they're the same in enzyme concentration. So just to finish off uh, the last little bit in your notes, after this, you've got a page that talks about unique creatures or how photosynthetic organisms are cool. So if you were this guy here, so this is a photosynthetic euglena, I think. Photosynthetic, sorry. Euglena is the name of him. And so what he has, hmm, can't spell today, but that's okay. What he has is he has both chloroplasts and mitochondria. So what he can do is he can make his own glucose using photosynthesis and use it for cellular respiration to generate ATP for other processes. Then he makes that carbon dioxide and water again, they go in and become inputs and it becomes this nice little cycle all the way around, yeah? where the outputs of one become the inputs of the other. And so long as they have this input of light energy, they're happy to just function on their own. Pretty cool, but we can't do that. And here is just one more summary here. I want you to kind of cross off this little guy here. Um, you can see photosynthesis, where does it happen? It happens in a chloroplast. What do you need? Water and carbon dioxide. This here is quite general. I need you to know the inputs and outputs of all of the different stages within these. But this is all of photosynthesis and all of aerobic respiration tried to be condensed into one little table for you. And that is the end of area of study one.